today is the grand opening of the Crestfield Playground. Uh, this has been a dream come true for the Farm Hills Association up here in Upper Hingham and the Recreation Commission has spent quite a lot of time planning and developing this idea. Uh, two years ago we went for the CPC grant and we're also able to secure a state grant making this dream come true. The special uh, part of this playground is that it's not only handicap accessible but, and friendly, but handicap and special needs kids have all the advantages of other children at this play area. What we feel makes this playground a little bit unique is that this playground has poured in place rubber pathways, um, which is extremely soft. Um, and if a child is in a, in a wheelchair, um, it is also a lot easier to roll um, than the wood chips. Some of the slides, um, in terms of tactile feel, the slides have rollers, so it adds a little bit more tactile feel to it. Some of our swings have backs to it rather than just an open swing. Uh, not only do they have an opportunity to feel, texture, um, hear sensory kind of play equipment, but the ability to climb, the ability to rock back and forth, all the areas that kids love to play with. I mean, there is something for everyone. I, I, I hope that you can see behind me this wonderful swing. It's sort of like a chaise lounge, I call it, or um, a hammock. And the opportunity to sit there with your child uh, for any size children. I mean, to me, children are anywhere from zero to 99. We can all enjoy a nice playground, and this playground is one of them. Two reasons which makes this playground so special. Um, South Hingham was really in need of a public playground um, and also uh, every playground has to be handicap accessible but not every playground adds true uh, play value to handicap and special needs children where we feel that this playground um, does. Well really I, I think this community is overdue to give South Hingham a public playground. Um, for many years uh, Crestfield really just had residential toys we used to joke and say that uh, Crestfield was the place where toys went to go die, um, where there, the basketball court was filled with 25 to 30 ride-along toys, which is nice, but it's also nice to be able to provide um, South Hingham with a true commercial grade, high quality playground. There has always been residential uh, play equipment here, which quite honestly is dangerous, but we hated to remove it until we had a plan to put something in its place and the neighbors got a little tired of having broken toys in their backyard. So the Recreation Department has spent a lot of time trying to find the right play equipment and the right plan for this area. The reason we took this special step in going uh, that next uh, stage to a special handicap play equipment is because of the accessibility of this area. There is absolutely perfect graded land here so it's very wheelchair accessible. Uh, and again, the basketball court makes it perfect for that. It's been about a two and a half year process. We applied to CPC two years ago. Um, at the time, there just wasn't quite the, the budget or the playground, but they asked, uh, they, everyone liked the project, so they asked us to come back the following year, which we did. And we're thankful for uh, the Town of Hingham Community Preservation Commission, and also we were awarded a $50,000 state grant. So between the CPC and the state grant, we were able to get the funding to finally get this project done. Extremely lucky to have a dedicated community in Farm Hills, a tight-knit community, where they were able to get together, get the volunteers of 20 plus people from eight in the morning to about 5 p.m. On, um, on the Saturday afternoon in the fall, and it didn't even matter. Some of the, some of the neighbors don't even have kids. They just got together um, and literally worked all day, which saved the project close to $20,000. And because of that, we were able to put that money back into the play equipment to produce a better quality playground. Farm Hill Civic Society's been around you know, since the 60s. It was mainly um, put into play in town to, to to look after the town and the, the, the concerns of the neighborhood when there's things that they're, that come into the town, whether it's uh, you know the Derby Street shops or 40B housing or you know any things that may affect the neighborhood. We meet twice a year 
we go over topics, things that we'd like to see, and we can you know, look into what things are possible, what things are not possible, and with the help of the town. So two years ago, I spent time with Mark Thorell at the Ham Recreation Department, and we worked on you know, the design of what we wanted down here. The playground had been kind of left behind, so we've wanted to clean up the area and make this park a much usable and you know a friendly place for parents to bring their kids and play down here. So when we first went to the Hingham Recreation Department, they had mentioned to us about you know getting some ideas from our neighborhood um, on the types of you know apparatus that we wanted on the playground swings, you know, th things to climb on, things that could be interactive, music, and just, you know, hands-on type things. So uh, we went to a couple playground manufacturers to get some ideas and books, and, you know, we sent that out to all our members of Farm Hills, and folks gave us feedback on things that they really wanted, things they didn't really care for, and then we kind of pieced it together and then brought it back to Hingham Rec and back to the CPC. Part of it, when we were doing our planning for the, the playground, uh, we thought it would be, you know, one thing that's kind of missing in town is, uh, you know, a park that uh, is, makes it accessible for handicapped kids or, you know, kids with learning disabilities that with this property, it's very level, um, it's easy accessible to drive into Crestfield and park and all the, the gateways you know, up to all the apparatus will be wide enough for wheelchairs and easily to get you know, families up in and out of most of the apparatus. And again, this park is a great place for the SNAP program to actually run activities too. We want it to be used by the, the entire town, it's not just South Hingham and, and the Farm Hills neighborhood. There's limited space in the town for all these activities. So if we can provide one more spot that kids can come and do you know, some softball, baseball, or field day, and then use the playground, it'll be a great thing for all of us to use. So we're looking forward to that piece of it too. Well, Crest Field is, you know, it was, it's land that was donated by a Farm Hills neighbor many years ago. My husband gave this park to the city. Um, it's called Crest Field because that was the name of his aunt and uncle, Herman and Elsa Crest, who lived on this property. When he first gave the park, this woods back here were open too. It used to be pasture land. And then over the years, the woods grew up and the ball field has been active. It's always been a park for you know baseball, softball, and the basketball courts and a small little playground previously. See, when we you know, had this goal in mind, we went to the Hingham Recreation Department and spoke with Mark Thorell. And he thought it was a great idea. Uh, Crestfield was on the radar of needing an upgrade. Bradley Woods had got a similar playground not too long ago, so we saw the opportunity there to go to the CPC, which is awesome. And actually in this project, the delay in the two years actually worked out to the benefit of us and CPC because through the Recreation Department, we put in a, for a grant through the state, which we ended up getting a large sum of money to, uh, to basically split the project in half and once the project's completed, we go back to the state uh, and you know, show the project has been completed. And then that money will go back to CPC to get used on another project in town. So it actually ended up being a perfect situation and scenario. So what we have here today is a community build. And that's where we get volunteers from the community that come together and actually build the playground. Some site work's been done ahead of time and then we have the community come in, a bunch of volunteers that actually physically put it, the nuts and bolts together, assemble it, we'll actually cement it in the ground, and then obviously we'll go back after and we'll go over everything and double and triple check to make sure everything's right. Community builds, there's two great factors to it. One great factor is it saves on your budget because we're not hiring an installer to do all this work. So there's, there's a big cost savings by having a community build. And the second is just the involvement of the community. You know, the parents love to come out here, put this together and you know, tell their kids, you know, hey, we built this, we built this for you. 
And then the kids, you know, have that connection to the playground. And a lot of times we do community builds and I hear from parents that will say, oh, you know, we did this, you know, across town on another playground or we're coming back to the playground 10, 15 years later because we have that connection to it. We built it. And so it's just a phenomenal event for the community. You can see by the turnout, you know, we've got 25 people on a morning shift. We got another 25, 30 on, a, on an afternoon shift. Um, so it's, it's, just, it's a great community builder and, you know, and the kids do love it. The design we have is designed to be fully accessible. There are state codes and federal codes and regulations that we abide to that provide requirements as to the types of play, different types of play, spinning and swinging and overhead climbing. We have sensory and we have tactile features all on this playground and all accessible. That type of design is just, it's phenomenal for community. A lot of playgrounds are not designed this way. Years past, we designed playgrounds different because we didn't realize the amount of kids that have different you know, physical or, or sensory issues. The whole design process, allowing a multitude of kids to play on a bunch of different events. And you know, given the size of the playground, we can accommodate a lot of kids. So it's a, it's a great addition to the community. Yep, so we've each been tackling it in little projects at a time and assembling the pieces of all the play structure. The swing set portion is up um, and concrete's coming soon. And I think in the next couple weeks, the rubber floor surface will be put down. Well, we were working earlier on a piece that's already in the holes over there, which was a sensory panel for the kids. It's kind of a serpentine um, piece of equipment with all sorts of things for uh, like a child who who can't see visually. There's a lot of activity for that child. And then we just put up, we just put this panel together, which is the music panel. Of course, it doesn't sound good laying down, but standing up. And then we have drums. Um, so it's, it's many sensory things that are available in this particular model. And it's just so fun to be out here on a beautiful day and the weather's nice and there's kids playing and you can already see that it will be, definitely be utilized. So it feels nice to be part of something that will be here for a long time. By the end of the day today, we will have 98% of the structure in place, together, and actually cemented in the ground. The last 2% or so will be done by an installer, my certified installer that we have, just because there's a couple components that require the machine to, to lift and assemble. We don't like to have that running when there's volunteers here, but they'll finish that this week and then we bring the surfacing in, so all in all, probably about another two to three weeks, and this will be fully complete and open to the public. Of course, all the kids think it'll be done today, so they were a little disappointed <laughs> when they couldn't come down and play tonight. But yeah, it will be really fun to have a big um, celebration. your attention please. Welcome. Good afternoon. I'm Vicki Donlan, the Recreation Commission Chair, and I want to welcome you to the grand opening of the Crestfield Playground. This project is a long time dream for the Farm Hills Association who played with deteriorating recreation uh, residential play equipment for a long time now. The Recreation Commission had this project on our priority list for seven long years, and I know you've been very patient waiting for this. But thanks to the 2016 town meeting vote, we were able to get CPC funds in the amount of $132,243, and yes, every dollar counts, that was committed to this project. The Commission was also very fortunate and successful in getting a state grant, it's a park grant, which is a reimbursable grant, which means $50,000 will come back to CPC this year and hopefully be in good use uh, for other projects in town. So the timing of the project and the grants couldn't have been more perfect for this beautiful day to be able to open this beautiful um, play area. We're thankful to the Farm Hills Neighborhood Association who was willing to volunteer their time for the community build 
program which saved $18,000 for this and I know many of those members are here today. They work very hard in putting this playground together. What CPC has done is learned over the years that if you put Mark Terrell and Vicki Donlin, <laughs> their committees together with an idea, it's always a success. They think of every detail, they come before us with plans that are so well thought out, and uh, they know what they're doing, they know recreation, and they know what kids enjoy, and what's safe, and all of that. And I look forward to working on future projects, which I know are coming along. Um, but thank you to Vicki and Mark and your team, this is just wonderful. CPC, of course, was created with a surcharge on your tax dollars uh, to do just this kind of work, to uh, preserve historic relics and, and businesses and buildings in town, to purchase open space like the wonderful Laner property we purchased last year, and to help with affordable housing. But recreation came on a few years ago, and I must say they have taught all of us how to do this. This is perfect housing. How are you, Celeste? <laughs> <laughs> I love redheads. So thanks to one and all. I really congratulate you. This is wonderful. I hope you'll all take time to go with your children and experiment and see all this wonderful new equipment. Plate equipment has changed a lot since we were growing up. This is marvelous, state of the art. Uh, but the real credit goes to the entire Farm Hills community. Without your support, writing letters, making phone calls, attending meetings, and speaking in favor of this beautiful new playground, the project would never happen. Most importantly, your sweat equity, which saved the project close to $20,000, is greatly appreciated by the town and the Recreation Commission. Um, the community build says a lot about the character of the people who live here. You all were more than willing to sacrifice your Saturday to make sure that this project was completed on budget. It is truly remarkable that many residents who don't even have young children who would benefit from the playground also gave up their time to support this community playground. I especially want to thank Ted Healy and Karen Daly who were there every step of the way over the last two year years. You two were instrumental in making sure we had support at every single town meeting. You also contributed by handling the logistics of the community build. Your support and time is what put this project over the top. Thank you, Ted and Karen, for your generosity and your support. Um, as a founder of, uh, of South Shore SNAP, uh, we, we have uh, found a home for uh, our special needs kids and our parents. Uh, we're now in our fourth year. Um, this park is just so fantastic for the special needs kids. What I found in the four years since we have established the program um, I found the difference between a special needs kid and typical kids is nothing. They're exactly the same. Kids are kids. Parents are parents. It's the opportunity. It's the opportunities that a lot of the special needs kids don't have that we're bringing to them. We're bringing them the venues. The venues where they can share stories, they can share their life's lessons, and the kids can be kids with each other. It's not about uh, really athleticism, and it's not necessarily uh, about the challenge of, uh, of athletics. It's about connections. It's about making connections in the community. And CPC, we thank you for standing up and helping this community come up with something, another great venue to bring our kids together. The socialization aspect that this brings, it brings the things that tie the typical families together available for the special needs families as well. And it also allows the kids to enjoy each other without being tagged as a special needs kid or a typical kid for that matter. So again, I compliment Vicki, uh, those of you that don't know her, she's a little bit driven. Um, she's a, a little bit, um, you know, making sure that things go on. And Mark is the one that gets done everything that Vicky wants to get done. So that's their job description. And Carol Pyle has done a great job and also working with Tom Pyle um, on the, uh, the field project. They're very, very dedicated to the town of Hingham and we greatly appreciate all the things that they give to us. Come on, Karen, you can come to me. Sure. Come on, Come on.
again. Thank you all for coming. I hope the kids can enjoy the time. Thank you. <laughs> It's truly remarkable to see what can be accomplished when um, neighborhoods work together um, in terms of their support throughout the project. I truly believe the, the project may have not gone through. If, if CPC doesn't see that the neighborhood is fully behind it, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily go through. So, so yeah, just the, what, what can happen when neighborhoods work together from the support aspect and the community build aspect. I love working with a playground committee that you know has an idea and they say you know we want to get a new playground for our kids and to take it from that point to get to the point where we are now where this comes to fruition you know early on in the stages it's all on paper and we're doing you know designs and we're figuring out budgets and then you know we're going to the town and we're fundraising and they're fundraising so it's great to see that transition from you know design to actually in the ground and within you know two weeks kids will be playing on it. So that process is awesome. Again, the fact that we have the opportunity to bring a segment of the community that isn't usually at play areas, those who have uh, special needs children, uh, being able to come and play with other children like their own gives the parents an opportunity to meet each other and spend time getting to know each other, knowing that their kids are in a safe environment. So it's very special and I hope that uh, uh, eventually people from around the South Shore will be able to call this a playground they can uh, find a home at. Yeah, we're always looking for different community involvement, whether it's volunteer help or support of projects. And, um, feel free to call me at 781-741-1464 or check out our website HinghamRec.com. I feel as a Recreation Commissioner that every neighborhood in Hingham deserves to have a play area. As a grandmother now with two small grandchildren, I spend a lot of my time at playgrounds and I enjoy every minute as much as I did when my son was a small child. So, you know, playgrounds are not just for little children, they're for all ages and there's nothing better than having your children outside, enjoying the fresh air, uh, getting away from the TV or from the um, iPhones, iPads, iPods, all of those things that really are not as creative as we'd like to see our children to be. So playgrounds are just the best place to be all times of year. Uh, the playground is just as much fun in the snow as it is in the summer. So hopefully people will enjoy this one 365 days a year.